Guck mal, was der. All right, today we're talking with Marine Corps veteran Brendan Aronson, co-founder and CEO of the Military Veteran and also a big venture capitalist and serial entrepreneur. So, Brendan, thanks for being on the show today. I want to start off by uh, talking about what you did when you were in the Marine Corps. Thanks for having me, Joe. I really appreciate it. And congrats on uh, everything you've done with the podcast. Thanks. Um, as far as my Marine Corps background, I joined the Marine Corps after graduating from the Naval Academy in 2012. And I was an infantry officer for six years. So I was uh, with 1st Battalion, 1st Marines out on the West Coast as a platoon commander, did a deployment to uh, Oki in that capacity, mm -hmm. came back. I spent a little bit of time training uh, Marines going on advisor deployments and uh, Marine expeditionary units. So folks that are deployed on ships mm -hmm. and then did an advisor deployment to Iraq in 2016. So I was there for almost the whole year. I was there for nine months. Um and we were advising the Iraqi army. Um, if you remember back in 2016, ISIS controlled up to the outskirts of Baghdad. So when we got in country, we were stationed between Ramadi and Fallujah out in the western part of the country. Mm -hmm. And we helped the Iraqi army plan for and retake most of the Euphrates River Valley, as well as coordinated a ton of airstrikes um, in our AO. Yeah. That was an interesting experience. And then um, Came back home and transitioned uh, out of the Marine Corps in 2018. Um, for that last year, I was working as the operations officer at Advisor Training Branch um, out at the West Coast, so training folks to go do the same deployment that I had done. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what's amazing is, yeah. I look back on I was, I was there at uh, Al Takada and TQ mm -hmm. for and mostly Al Assad and Korean Village in 07 and 08, and you know it was always in the news back then. But like once. You know, certain presidents said that we're no longer in Iraq, even though we were still in Iraq. Like, there's been no coverage at all. I mean, that, that what those are big operations that took place that you're talking about. Absolutely zero coverage anywhere on the news about it. You know, it's like, no, we're not really there anymore. But yeah, we've still got a huge presence. And then I was talking with somebody else the other day. It's like we, we were always flying out near the Syrian border and everything. He's like, do not cross the Syrian border. And now we've got, you know, in and out of all sorts of stuff in Syria you know, setting up per semi-permanent operations in Syria all the time. Yeah. It's just crazy, but it's just not really on the news anymore. You know, it's like old stories. So it's just, it's interesting to hear somebody that, uh, talk about it that was actually there. So, um, talk about what your transition was like, you know, the, the military veteran, your company, your main company now is all about helping transitioning veterans and helping companies hire, uh, veterans coming out of the military. What was your transition like? Yeah, I mean, I feel very lucky and fortunate in my own transition. Um, when I came back from Iraq, I was actually supposed to transition out in the spring of 2017, but my back was like a disaster, just physically in very bad shape. Um, and I think a lot of that was just wear and tear as a lot of that's experience, especially in the infantry. Um, so I stayed in the Marine Corps for an extra year to rehab it, deferred at an MBA program during that time. And it really gave me kind of time and space to set myself up into a better spot for my transition. Um, it gave me time to apply to an internship in financial services at Goldman Sachs in New York, which I was lucky enough to, uh, to get. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then also to start volunteering with an organization called Service to School. Service to School is a nonprofit that's helped thousands of vets matriculate in higher ed. If there's enlisted vets that are thinking about going to undergrad, you definitely need to reach out to service to school service, the number two, and then school.org. Huh. Um, they can help you with your uh, application. They've actually established relationships directly with some of the nation's top schools, like the top 30 schools. So like places like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Stanford, they now accept transfer students and they have veterans now, you know, 10 years ago, there were zero veterans at those schools. And today there's like 50 to 80 student veterans at each of those places, along yeah. with a myriad of other great spots. So um, that experience of volunteering for that nonprofit actually serendipitously introduced me to um, my current business partner, Tim, uh -huh. um, which I'll get into in a moment. But um, volunteering for a nonprofit was super helpful. And then going and working in financial services was interesting. I went through the MBA program at Wharton and ended up declining a full-time offer to go into financial services. Uh, because I wanted to launch something for myself. Yeah. And so I would say I had um, like a 
fairly straightforward transition out of the military and it was still incredibly challenging you know <laughs> even even being set up for success and even yeah. feeling like i knew what i needed to do um and having some goals that i set for myself it was still really hard part of it um was by virtue of the fact that i lost my father during my transition and we were very very close which i think was very challenging but yeah. More holistically, what I see from veterans is this loss of uh, purpose and this loss of a tribe. Oh yeah, and those those two things are really hard. I mean, um, I remember telling my brother um, when I was getting out; he's still a Marine. Um, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to find something that is going to give me the sense of purpose of leading Marines, but but that's okay. You know, I'll be fine in the civilian world, and I'll find you know a great paying career. And um, losing that sense of purpose is really hard. Um, it's yeah. it hit me a lot harder than I thought. Um, yeah. You know, I love the military mindset and I think that's what a lot of it, we, we, we miss the people, you know, when we yeah. get in the military, that, that tribe sure. and everything else. Um, cause I mean, you can think about like certain times people you're deployed with, whatever you're like, I am so, I'm just looking forward to just getting the hell out of here and away from these people. You know, you, 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 you forget about yeah. those parts, but the, the truth is, you know, you really do love the people and, and the camaraderie and in that tribe. And uh, when you unplug yourself from it, it's kind of, it's, it's nice at first because you get away from all the hustle and bustle and hectic life, but it quickly becomes very boring because you, you realize mm -hmm. that you really do love it. And uh, um, what's, what's interesting is I've said, I've said that, you know, the closest thing I found to the military mindset or, you know, that sense of purpose, you know, what what else compares to leading Marines as an infantry officer in combat? The the closest thing I've ever found would be entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs have that 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 stick to itness, that mission accomplishment mentality, that creativity, and leading an entrepreneurial venture. You know, is nothing like it, it, in in so many ways. It's nothing like being an infantry leader, of course, but it's like the, the mindset is still the same. You know, it's, it's the closest thing I could. Th that's why I lo love about entrepreneurship. I, mm -hmm. I love the hunt, the chase and, and the, the pull for success. So, um, you know, that I think veterans make great entrepreneurs. They make great employees too. Um, for sure. you know, veterans getting into entrepreneurial roles can be, you know, one of the most satisfying things they can do when they get out. Yeah. I mean, I feel like to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be a zealot, right? It's the same thing as being a Marine. Like, yeah. I mean, you meet Marines and they're zealots, like they are true believers. And, um, and that's one of the things I love about working with Marines and veterans more holistically. Um, but to be an entrepreneur, I do think you have to be, you know, um, it requires an intense amount of focus, discipline, and it's just hard. It's super, super hard every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's so many highs and lows that I think of it as a full, like mind, body and spirit endeavor, you know, I mean, you have to have each portion of that has to be dedicated to growth. Mm -hmm. You know, my first venture was very challenging and, um, coming out of that experience and figuring out what was next, you know, it really made me question a lot of what I want, thought, you know, I wanted to do with my life and my sense of purpose. And, um, and ultimately I think what I recognized was like, Hey, I'm just like not good enough as an entrepreneur yet, but that doesn't mean I never can be as long as I can continue to learn and grow for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Right. I can get good at this. It's just going to take a long time and it's going to take consistent effort over a long period of time. So I try and encourage people to think with that kind of long-term mindset, because I think it can be very helpful. Yeah. Um, even if you're not where you want to be today, that doesn't mean that you can't get there in the future. Absolutely. That's a great stopping point. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right. Back talking with, Marine Corps veteran, Brendan Aronson, co-founder and CEO of the military veteran. So you're hitting on a really key point there, Brendan, when you're talking about your first venture, it was really hard and you learned a lot. It wasn't really a big success, but you know, entrepreneurship is a process. And mm -hmm. oftentimes it's not a one-time chance and you're done and you're out. It's every time you jump in an entrepreneurial venture and fail, you've learned more about the process. And eventually when you figure out the process, you can run any idea or any product through that same process, and then you can be successful. Wholeheartedly agree. I mean, entrepreneurship and business more generally, first of all, for people looking for a passion or transitioning out of the military and feeling the same concern, I would tell you that you can and will find a passion in the civilian world. Hopefully you'll find something that challenges you and provides you the sense of fulfillment that I found in business. 
business can be extremely interesting. It can force you to grow in a lot of different ways. To your point about entrepreneurship and continuing to learn, I mean, it does force you to take um, your long-term goals and break them into really simple bite-sized chunks and mm -hmm. ask, how can I march the ball forward today? And then ruthlessly prioritize. There are, I mean, right now my to-do list is like, I mean, it's just hundreds and hundreds of items, you know, mm -hmm. if I want to get to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And so I need to ruthlessly prioritize what do I need to do in order to march the ball forward? Mm -hmm. I see a lot of first-time entrepreneurs avoid eating their frogs. And by that, I mean, like, uh, there are going to be tasks that you hate doing. I see this in transitioning vets too. It's like, um, it typically comes back to some sort of cold outreach. Like they know they need a network. So they'll reach out to a couple of people on LinkedIn and then they'll just be like, all right, cool. I reached out for the day, but they're not tracking it. They're not logging how many people they've reached out to. And so it feels like they've done a lot more outreach than they actually have. I see this as well in uh, entrepreneurs who are like, well, I'm going to reach out to some potential clients, reach out to a handful of them, not tracking it. It's very uncomfortable and it's boring and it's like annoying work. And so they'll kind of think that they've done more than they actually have. And so I just always encourage people to think about and prioritize what is truly going to move the needle forward. It tends to be the boring work that you don't want to do. <laughs> um, yeah. But that same process of thinking with a long-term vision, setting your priorities for the day, and then ruthlessly executing um, will come back to pay you benefits throughout your civilian career. Yeah, you know, and sometimes we take for granted or, or we even loathe the fact that in the military... We have daily training plans. You have daily flight schedules. You got everything, everything's scripted. And oftentimes we're even the ones putting those plans together. Mm -hmm. Things happen. You get out, you start your own business and, and you don't hold yourself accountable with those hardcore things that you used to always do because there's no one else. Look, there's not really anybody looking over your shoulder, you know, and totally. so as in, when you, that's a, a tough transition. To entrepreneurship is learning how to hold yourself accountable, even when no one's watching um, because oftentimes you are on your own. You are, especially in the beginning, you might not have other people working with you, and it's easy to not hold yourself accountable. Oh yeah, it's it's very easy. It's also easy to become busy without making real progress. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and a lot of that just comes down to like not knowing what to focus on. Or with entrepreneurship, I also talk to a lot of times people who have an idea for a product, but haven't necessarily talked to as many customers as they need to. I think that's a big mistake as well. Um, you know, you want to spend as yeah. much time as possible talking to customers. And then they'll also have an idea that's like, hey, this will be really valuable when there's like a million members on the platform. And it's like, yeah, I mean, that is true. Like almost anything, sure. anywhere I can get like a million people to pay attention to is going to have value. Um, but how can you create value in the interim to build traction so you can build up to that kind of level? Right. That's harder to think about. It's really hard for people to think in terms of like what tangible steps can I take to march this thing forward? Yeah. We made that mistake a few times, you know, in our Amazon business, we were creating products of our own and things like that and did a number of different angles with Amazon. But there, I made the, some of those same mistakes. I fell in love with my own idea, mm -hmm. and solicited it out to customers enough to find out if it was really an interest in people even wanting that. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a saying in entrepreneurship too, is like, if you ask people for feedback, they'll give you encouragement. And if you ask them for their money, they'll give you feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, uh, Yeah. I heard it a little bit. It, if you ask someone for money, they'll give you advice. If you ask somebody for advice, they'll give you money. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, more so true for investors. Like if you're raising capital for your yeah, business. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to people asking money. You should go to them asking for advice. <laughs> How true. Yeah. I think it's a little bit of a mixed bag. If if it if folks are raising capital, I also work as a venture capitalist at a venture fund called Context Ventures, where we invest in military veteran entrepreneurs. We also host the Military Veterans Startup Conference. Uh, you can go to millvetstartups.com and check out the conference. We get great speakers to come through. Our last event had about 450 folks in San Francisco. Um, ton of fun. Joe, you should join us there. You'd have a great time. Yeah. Um, awesome. And um you know, if you are going to be raising capital for your business, um, I do think you do have to have the ask at some point, right? You have to say, Hey, this is what we're raising. These are what the terms are. Yeah. Um, and we can talk about the process of raising capital. If that's of interest, it's a challenging process for sure. Um, what is your next event? so the next event for context ventures, the next startup event will be February of 2024. Mm -hmm. We just had it last February. The first year we did it was 2020. 
two, we had like 200 folks. Mm -hmm. The one this year had 450. And then next year, I'm guessing it'll be larger. Um, we also have a number of events for transitioning veterans. So in July, we'll host a transition career conference in San Francisco. Um, that'll be July 20th, 21st. The keynote speaker for that is a, a guy named Graham Weaver. He's the founding partner at Alpine Investors. Mm -hmm. um, so he's raised about $8 billion of capital and deployed it across hundreds of uh, companies. And he's hired dozens of military veterans to lead his companies. Really inspiring and interesting guy. We've got yeah. about 20 or 30 other business executives that will speak at that event. So if you're a veteran that's looking to build your network, join us in San Francisco, July 20th and 21st. Yeah. An incredible opportunity to do so. And then same type of event in New York, September 28th and 29th. Um, in New York City, our keynote speaker for that event is Larry Smith, who's the chairman of Tokyo Electron. Oh. Um, Army veteran. It's like a 50 something billion dollar um, semiconductor business. Uh -huh. Um, and then we have, you know, 20 to 30 other business executives that'll speak at that New York event. They're both going to be great places to come build your network. If you're a student veteran, the discounts make the tickets like almost free. I think it's like $10. Oh, wow. Um, and so the, there's just no better bang for your buck. I mean, I know folks that came in with no civilian network and left knowing hundreds of folks to their left and right and 50 or 60 folks, five, 10 and 20 years in front of them who can serve as mentors to them as they are thinking about the next phase of their careers. Yeah. You know, one thing about networking, uh, there's a big misconception all the time about networking. It's like ne networking is typically not, I'm going to go to this conference to try to meet this one guy and see if that guy mm -hmm. will hire me. That's not what network networking is like, you know, having faith that it just works. You, it takes time. Like you, you go into conferences like this and you meet people without knowing when or how it's going to pay off just with the, with the faith that it will pay off at some point. You just don't know. You're going to meet somebody that leads you to someone else that leads you to someone else. And then boom, something pays off. That's what networking is. You really don't know. I mean, there's deliberate networking where you're trying to meet certain kinds of people, but for the most part, networking is one of those things. You just need to do it all the time and, and develop relationships and eventually things will come from it. Um, hundred percent. It's yeah. really well said and really, really, really important point for veterans because of the fact that our careers in the military are so linear. Mm. We don't, we look at networking as a dirty word. It's like, Oh, I would never want to, I want to be promoted based on the merits of my accomplishments as a Marine officer. Right. Not who I know. Yeah. Right. But that's not actually true in the civilian world because if people don't know who you are, they can't know how competent you are and they can't help you. Um, so your networking is just making friends. And just like with any of your friends, if you have the ability to, you will help your friends. If you know of a great role for them, you'll help them get it. If you know of great opportunities for them, you'll plug them in. So it's just making friends when you're transitioning, it feels challenging to ask for favors from people that you don't know. And it feels very transactional, but I promise you'll help those folks in the future. I reached out to hundreds of vets when I was transitioning out of the military, they helped me get my foot in the door at Goldman. They helped me get my foot in the door in my MBA program. Some of them ended up being investors in my businesses. And then others have helped get jobs in the interim. So, I mean, they yeah. certainly weren't helping me at that pivotal phase because they were like, well, I bet Brendan will help me in the future. They're yeah. helping me because that's what veterans do. We reach back and we help one another because we know that that's a challenging transition. But I have, I remember it, of course. I'm very grateful for it. And I've reached back out to be as helpful to them as possible. And um, in their professional careers and more holistically, like they're close friends now, you know, I, I go to them for advice. They come to me for advice. Right. That's what networking is. It's not this transactional thing where you're saying, help me, please. It is developing a relationship and friendship built on trust so that we can all, you know, lift one another up as we climb. Yeah. I, I had a, I had a boss in the Marine Corps who was a great networker. And at mm -hmm. one point, one time he said, I want to make sure I know someone before I ever need something from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's brilliant. Like, I get it. You know, like he was always trying to go out of his way to meet certain people. Like, why, why do you care about what this guy's doing? Why do you want to go meet? Why are we going here and meeting this guy? Like, yeah, he had no intentions other than getting to know people in the beginning. And then something, you know, six months later happens like, oh, I've, we've already met him. We know them. It's so much easier to do the ask if you already know him, you know, and that's, that's kind of what a lot of networking is getting to know people. Um, and if it, if it, from them, you know, if it makes folks feel like uncomfortable um, thinking about it in terms of like, I will have an ask for this person one day, think of it from the perspective of service. You know, how can I be of service to folks, 
right? I'm transitioning out of the military. So maybe I don't necessarily have the professional things that I can help with, but if I'm just going to be a person that's just going to give and give and give, you know, through getting involved, maybe in nonprofits, which are great ways to build your network, by the way, um, yeah. or um, just finding out how you can be of service to folks in your network and you approach it from the mentality of like, I just want to give, then that is going to pay dividends because you'll develop really authentic, genuine relationships and um, you'll be used to providing other people with value, um, you know, right from the get go. So uh, yeah. that's another way to think of it. I think that could be more palatable. So everything you've learned about military transition and everything, was that the the catalyst for starting up the military veteran? Yeah, I mean, we knew the process of transitioning was not fun <laughs> from first person experience. I mean, yeah. my business partner, Tim, uh, you know, he tells the story of how he got rejected from hundreds of jobs when he was transitioning, ended up getting a JD MBA at Stanford and launching a business himself as well before co-founding this business with me. Um, but yeah, it's a hard process, man. It's super, super hard. And so we want to provide a forum for play people to connect with one another through these in-person events. Mm -hmm. And then we also work with employers who are hiring folks. Um, the, the jobs that we, we work with folks to, uh, to get range, um, from jobs for folks transitioning directly out of the military up through more senior executive positions, um, CEOs, general managers, chief, uh, revenue officers, chief financial officers, um, so we have kind of a widespread of different roles available. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the goal is, you know, the more veterans that we can get into fantastic companies, the more veterans that they will hire, um, and the more military spouses that they'll hire. So, yeah. um, yeah, those are, those are, that's basically the reason that we started is like, we know this process sucks. And so if we can make an impact, um, and do some good for our community, then we'll do that. So how do we find the military veteran? You can find us on our website. It's the milvet.org. You can also find us on Instagram. It's at the military vet. And then you can find, I post on LinkedIn almost every day. It's Brendan Aronson. Uh, feel free to reach out, follow and connect. If you're going to connect, send a note when you connect. Um, pro tip, don't just like randomly reach out to someone with a connection request. Include a note and say like, hey, I'm a transitioning Marine. You know, I heard you on X, Y, and Z. I'd be interested in connecting. Um, yeah, and I post about it on all those channels, so. Yeah, um, and so the military veteran you guys not only help transitioning veterans, but you also help companies hire veterans. So you're right. both sides, both sides of that great divide. Always like there's so many great companies out there that want to hire veterans. And there's so many veterans that want to work for all these companies, but there's still this great divide. People, you're looking across the grand Canyon. We can't seem to make that uh, connection oftentimes. For sure. I mean, it's, it's challenging for both sides to reach one another. Um, so we try and facilitate those connections. Um, we get great, uh, employers to sponsor these events and come and speak at them. Um, we also, and then the clients that we're working with to hire for specific roles, they just need some help finding people that are a great fit with a specific type of experience or background. So, um, you know, we, we get to work finding candidates, interviewing and, and then helping client candidates through the interview processes as well. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, we're getting towards the end of our time here. So I do want to give you, give you the last, uh, the last word. So talk a little bit more about the military veteran, um, before we say the last words, um, what are some of the main things you see, whether it's things that veterans do, the great things veterans do when they're transitioning and the typical mistakes that they're making when they're getting out. Yeah. Um, on the great things side of the house, I would say, um, I mean, like, look, the things that made you successful in the military will make you successful in the civilian workforce. I love working with veterans because I hear this all the time. People say, oh, I'm not as worried about the title. Um, you know, I, I care about the title. I care about the compensation, of course, but I want to work with a great team that wants to win. And I want to work at a place I can make a huge impact. And it's just like, God, it just like sends chills down my spine to hear veterans say that because it's like these attributes that make you a fantastic teammate, those are incredibly valuable. So maintain those soft skills um, you know, keep coming into these, uh, employer relationships, thinking about how I can be of service to your organization and how can, I can be a world-class teammate. Those are fantastic. Biggest mistakes I see veterans make. There are a few, I mean, first you got to de-jargon your vernacular. So you can't be going in and talking about, you know, the most aggressive acronym I ever saw in the military was nav safe and ventracin. Can't be coming <laughs> and telling people that you worked at the nav safe and ventracin, right? Uh, yeah. so, 
vernacular. You can't be swearing, obviously. Um, people's resumes, that's a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of work, guys. So put in the work that's required. Um, you know, resumes, there's a longer conversation, but they should be impact driven. What impact did you make that you can call attention to? So yeah. if you were ranked really well, make sure that that's in there. And then thinking of networking as a dirty word. Don't think of networking as a dirty word. It is about making new friends so that you can help them in the future and they can be helpful to you. Do your cold outreach, reach out to a ton of people, follow up with them. Don't just send one message and assume that if you didn't get a response that people don't want to hear it, you mm -hmm. got to follow up with people. Joe, you followed up with me because I slacked off on an email and I'm really glad that you did, you know? So right. you've got to have your follow-up system, you know, even if it takes a long time. I have some people they're in my hopper for a year or two before I get them on the podcast. But I, I, I always keep those lines of communication open. Eventually we finally find, find a time to get an interview done. We were first connected last July. So yeah. it's taken nine months. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I didn't even realize it had been that long until you said yeah. it. Okay. Well, yeah. So. Well, I appreciate your follow-up. So follow up with people. I mean, send them another message and say, Hey, I know you're incredibly busy. I wanted to make sure that I'm being diligent about my follow-up. If you're open to connecting on a call, I'd love to learn more about your career. And then on your networking calls, keep the conversation in the other person's corner. So just like Joe does on this podcast, that's essentially what you're doing on these networking calls is how to tell me about your transition. How did you get to the point that you're at in your career? What do you wish you had known earlier? What skills can I develop to make myself a better employee for your organization? Mm -hmm. You can even put those folks to work for your networking. So ask them at the end of the call, Hey, who else should I connect with? You know, who would you recommend? If you hear of any open roles, please let me know. You know, I am actively recruiting and hoping to get into this industry. Yeah. So be diligent about your outreach, be diligent about your follow-up, send thank you notes after you connect with folks, and then keep them updated on your progress. I have folks that I talk to, and then I never hear from them again. And I'm like, what happened with this person? I don't know. Yeah. And then I have folks I talk to that reach back out to me and say, hey, I'm still searching in this area. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad you reached back out because I had actually forgotten that we had a conversation three months ago, but I do know some folks that are hiring in your area, yeah. right? So be yeah. diligent about keeping organized with these conversations because you need to circle back on them and yeah. in order to develop a long-term relationship, deliberate networking, deliberate follow-up. So yeah. uh, I do want to give you the last word, Brendan, um, in, in regards to entrepreneurship, if somebody's getting out of the military or they're in corporate America, didn't really like where they landed, wanting to start their own business, get into entrepreneurship, what kind of advice comes to mind? I mean, entrepreneurs, there's a, there are books to be written on this and there's like a ton of books that have been written on it. Um, I mean, um, if you feel like you've got the entrepreneurial bug, I mean, it's not for everyone. It's a savage um, road. But if you feel like you can't live without it, uh, then, you know, I do think taking the plunge can be incredibly liberating. I think what you want to do is really, really, really think about who are the customers that I can serve, mm -hmm. right? Who are those customers? What is their willingness and ability to pay? What are their biggest pain points? If you are uh, first time founder, especially folks coming straight out of the military. Most of the ideas I see are consumer type companies because that's all you've really been is a consumer. Yeah. Um, you don't know about B2B. And if you own a business, you get hit up all the time by people selling different kinds of solutions and you know what kinds of problems you have. I'm a big fan of B2B businesses personally. Consumer is very hard. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, but for B2B, it's like, you can just send more emails and you'll see more people interested in your product. Right. And they're bigger, you know, ticket values typically. So, you know, fewer wins just equates to more cash in your pocket potentially. So um, I would just very seriously consider what type of business model you'll be employing, what you're good at, what you like to do, who you'll be serving as a customer. And then you should come to our in-person events is really the other answer here is like the career events that we put on. We have entrepreneurship panels, we have investor panels, and then the startup events also have obviously it's like two days of those types of conversations and you'll just meet so many people that you know um it'll help build your network so that you know who to talk to about raising capital in the future and you at least have an idea of what needs to be done and then other than that i mean you know it's a there's a long road of uh of books and personal education that you need to do i write a weekly newsletter actually it's called retained learnings it's a pun on retained earnings. It's not a very funny one. <laughs> it's a very generous laugh. I appreciate that. You're probably the first and only person to ever laugh at that. But um, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> that, I mean, I write about a weekly weekly newsletter on that. It's uh, retainedlearnings.io or brendanaronson.substack.com. You can check it out there. You can also find it through my LinkedIn. So I put all my best entrepreneurship advice in that weekly newsletter. 
Awesome. That's great. I have to check it out. All right. Well, Brendan, thanks for sharing your entrepreneurial success story. Look forward to seeing your future success and uh, more success with uh, your company, the military veteran. Thanks, Joe. And likewise. All right. These two Marines are Oscar Mike.